What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back! In today's video we are checking out the latest electric scooter from Kugu Kirin. So the one that I have here today is called the G2 Pro. This is a scooter that has a top speed of 45 km an hour, it can do up to 55 km on one charge and the scooter is powered by a 600 watt motor that's in the rear wheel. We also have a front and rear suspension and yes the scooter does look a bit different than most other scooters available on the market. Ok, so we are gonna start by doing a bit of an unboxing just so I can show you how this comes packed in the box. So as you'd expect this scooter comes in a fairly big box and you do have to do a bit of an installation when you first get this. So compared to most other scooters out there this one is gonna take you about 20 minutes to put them together. But once you put it together you can go riding right away. You can also get this one with a seat. Personally I haven't used the seat on mine. I find it um, a bit strange to sit on a scooter but yes there is um, a seat that you can get and you can basically sit on it and just ride it um, sitting. But personally I'm just using it as a regular um, kick scooter that's electric um, of course. Ok so looking at the scooter itself on the front and on the back we have eight and a half inch um, inflatable tires. So you know when you have inflatable tires you can make them harder or softer so that will kind of increase the um, riding um, comfort I'm gonna say. Now on top of that we also have a front and rear suspension. So when you combine a front and rear suspension with the inflatable tires you know that you're gonna have a super comfortable um, ride. You can also adjust the front and rear suspension but personally I've just left it as it came um, from the box. We also have a front and rear disc brake and I can probably go as far as saying that the braking power from this um, scooter and basically the stopping power is one of the best from all the scooters that I got to try up until now. Not to mention that the braking is also pretty smooth so even if you come in um, really quick the braking is nice and smooth so the wheels don't um, randomly lock whenever you're braking. So I'm very very happy with the braking power that we get from those two disc brakes. We also have a fender on the front here and of course on the back. The fenders are made out of plastic but if you are riding over wet surfaces you are not gonna get splashed um, with water. On the rear fender here we also have um, a light so you can turn this on or off and this also acts as a brake light but this doesn't get super bright so during the day it is a bit um, difficult to see however at night you can clearly see it. On top of that we have two more um, lights on the sides here so on the left and on the right hand sides here so again that turns on or off whenever you turn on or off the lights. Those side lights also work as um, turning lights or signal lights however you want to call them. So on the handlebar we have a button here and you can kind of like signal if you are turning left and right. Again if it's during the day you can't really see those that well but if you are riding um, in the evening or early in the morning you can definitely see those um, lights. So you kind of have like turning lights um, on this scooter as well. So of course that will increase um, your safety and um, security on the road. Talking about lights we have another light on the front here. So this is the main headlight. This is bright enough so you can actually see it during the day. And then we have two more lights on the sides here. So again whenever Whenever you are um, turning left or right you can signal and these lights can flash so if you are turning left of course the left one will signal and so on. But as I said um, about the rear light um, you can barely see this during the day so you are gonna be able to see those much better um, at night. The 600 watt motor is located in the rear wheel um, here as I mentioned um, earlier and this one has a peak power of a thousand watts and I have to say that I was quite happy with the power that we get from this scooter. Now of course this is not as powerful as this scooter right here but it is powerful enough for most situations so even going uphill it can actually take me uphill on most hills of course not on all hills but um, it does better than a lot of other scooters that I got to try in the past. So appropriate power for this particular scooter in my opinion. The battery pack is located at the bottom here so like most scooters out there you're basically sitting on top of that um, battery pack whenever you're riding the scooter. The charging port is on the right hand side here and on the left hand side we have um, the kickstand. According to the manufacturer you can get up to 55 kilometers on one charge but of course that will depend on many many factors. It depends on how heavy you are, it depends on what kind of terrain you're riding, if you're riding uphill, if you're heavy and so on. 
Personally, I get about 30 to 35 kilometers on one charge. But if you're gonna be a bit lighter than me, if you don't ride up hills as much as I do, you're probably gonna get a bit more. But personally, I get somewhere between 30 and 35 kilometers on one charge. The kickstand is um, located on the left hand side of the scooter. This is made out of a combination of plastic, rubber and uh, metal. It feels nice and sturdy, also pretty big, so you don't have to get off the scooter to actually put this on. With other scooters, you kind of have to open that with your hand, but not to this one. And uh, the kickstand is nice and sturdy as well, so no complaints about that um, either. This is also a folding scooter, like most scooters out there. Now, this weights about 26.5 kilos. So, to fold this, you basically pull this up here, and then you kind of get this in place and then you can lift this up but as i said this weights about 26.5 kilos so it is a fairly heavy scooter so you're not going to be able to carry this for extended um, periods of time to unfold this is fairly simple but again because this has um, adjustable height for the handlebar you have to play with it a bit so you can move this up or down a bit so you put this back this way and then as i said you can adjust this so you would uh, loosen this up and then you can put this higher or lower now it depends what you're doing i'm uh, sure they have this adjustable so you can actually sit comfortably on uh, that seat but since I'm not using that seat, I can use this um, pretty much at any height. And I guess even a kid could ride this if you put this um, low enough. So the medium size is kind of perfect um, for me. And then uh, you close this. Moving up to the handlebar. So first of all, the handlebar is nice and wide. So whenever you're riding the scooter, uh, you don't um, feel cramped at all. So nice um, and light. On the left hand side and on the right hand side, of course, we have the brake levers. As I said earlier, the brakes work really good on the scooter. Then we have um, the on off button for the lights. So whenever you turn on the lights, you get pretty much all the six lights around the scooter to be on. Then we have the switch for the turn signals, um, if I can say. And then we have, let me just turn this on, the horn right here. So that's um, nice and loud as well. With this one, we also get um, two keys. So you kind of have to turn on the ignition before you get um, going. So you turn this on and then we have a button um, underneath the accelerator here. So that's how you power on the scooter. And from that button, you can also switch modes. So there are three modes available. Of course, in the slowest mode, um, the top speed, I believe it's like 15 kilometers an hour. In the second mode, um, it's 30 kilometers an hour. And in the third mode, it's 45 um, kilometers an hour but that doesn't actually change the way the scooter accelerates so the scooter kind of accelerates the same in all um, three modes just the top speed is different next to the accelerator here we also have a small display that will show you the battery's voltage however you cannot see this in direct sunlight i mean if you're riding at night no problem or indoors but in direct sunlight you cannot see what uh, this little display um, on the right hand side here um, shows then we have the big display. This is one of the biggest displays that I've seen um, on um, a scooter. And here you can see how much power the scooter is using, the battery that um, you have, how many kilometers you've done, and of course the mod you're in and the speed. Now the screen, since it's pretty big, you can see really well. Now if you're in direct sunlight, so it's a super bright day and the sun is like right above you, it is a bit difficult to see the screen, but in most situations you can kind of um, see the speed that um, you're doing basically. As I mentioned earlier, the riding on it is quite comfortable because we have that front and rear suspension, of course, those inflatable tires. So you can go over bumps, you can go over uneven terrain and you're not gonna feel any of those bumps. So really, really smooth riding experience, I'm going to say, over any terrain. The build quality is also excellent. So there are no loose parts. There are no parts that make any noise. So it doesn't matter what you do with it. If you're bumping over things, there are no uh, 
strange noises um, that um, you're gonna hear from the scooter so the build quality is also quite good but this is the same with the last Kugu Kirin scooter that I got um, to try so very well built um, scooters that 600 watt motor that we have um, on the back there I feel that it's powerful enough for most situations mostly if you're just riding in town now here where we live we have a lot of hills and even though this can pull up those hills more of those hills than most other scooters that I tried of course it's not going to be able to pull you over a hill that's uh, with an incline like this but for most hills out there I feel that there is plenty of power as for the top speed I was personally able to get 42 kilometers an hour as my top speed but I can see that if you're a bit lighter than me you can probably get to that 45 kilometer that the manufacturer suggests so overall I have to say that I am quite happy with the scooter, the range that I get from it, the power that I get from it, the suspension, because the suspension is a very important factor of um, a scooter. If you don't have that suspension you always feel those bumps in your knees and in your back, but that's not the case with this scooter. So overall I do like this scooter quite, um, quite a bit. Now of course I would have liked to see the second motor on the front but that would also increase the price. For example this one that I've been riding over the past two months I think this one has a motor on the front and one on the back but this one is double the price of this one so for the price yes this is um, appropriately powered I'm gonna say so if you are looking for a new scooter a scooter that looks a bit more off-road a scooter that looks a bit more different than most other scooters out there this is definitely one that you should consider the Kugu Kirin um, G2 Pro Alright guys, hopefully this video was useful, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.